Well, here we are for our next session, which I must say is pretty exciting. Um, I'm joined by Cy McNally from Power Max Racing. Hi, Cy. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Well, um, what we've got is uh, we've got a, a, a video just to play to everyone with the uh, of the tour. Um, so yes. we're, we'll play that now. And then once that's um, uh, done, we'll then come back and do a few questions um, I've got about the team and everything else. So um, uh, let's play the video. No worries. So first things first, Fabrication Bay. This is where the magic happens, as it were, when we first built the Astras. Um, so we've actually built three shells now. Um, obviously, chassis number one, Jason Plato's car. Chassis number two would have been Matt Jackson's car, but that's the car that the guys have been uh, that have been driving this year. Um, it all starts in here. So we're one of only two teams that actually build our own chassis. Uh, everybody else is built by mainly by Willie Paul and a couple of other companies. Um, but we took the decision in 2017, no, 2016, sorry, when we were getting ready to build the Astros that we were going to do it in-house. Um, one reason, simply for cost. Um, it's cheaper for us to do it ourselves. And secondly, it gives us the option if we have an incident trackside. It means that rather than waiting around for other companies, so say if there was a, a big crash at one round where four shells have been damaged, um, if we had to send them down to Willie Paul, who builds most of the chassis for the cars, um, you know we could be waiting weeks, which we can't really afford to do. So to put it in perspective, um, last year Rob Collard, big smash, Druxton bent the back end of the car. Um, team got back late Sunday night. By Monday afternoon, the car was completely stripped and the shell was here on this jig here. So, front part of the jig, those are the six bolts for the NGTC um, subframe. Rear, again, four bolts for the NGTC subframe. We'll go through those in a bit. Um, but yeah, Monday afternoon, shell was on here. Uh, by Tuesday, uh, the whole back end of the car was off, so rear quarter, boot floor, all of that was done. Um, by Wednesday it had gone off to our body shop for paint so it makes sense to keep everything in house and it also means that we can do work for other people so we've built chassis feet for a few cars so mini challenge a couple of other things a couple of other tin tops like that we've had a few on here that we've straightened and rebuilt uh, we build chassis for customers as well um, obviously can't really say what but we've had a few interesting things in here that we've done um, and looking to have a few more things over the winter as well so yeah this is kind of I guess the the major tool in our armory that most people haven't got. Um, yeah, it's quite a useful thing. So we'll move down, come down into the workshop itself. It's a little bit of a mess, so ignore that. But obviously, we've got a few interesting things scattered around. We've got the C1 up there that's in build at the minute, uh, the C1 cut. So we've built, I think we've built four or five of those now. They're a really popular thing. A lot of touring car drivers do it. It's a brilliant championship. Uh, and obviously, the, C the city car cut that's now coming on. Again, really, really good idea. Similar concept, very slightly different on the suspension and things like that, but it's it's a good idea. I think championships like that are a great idea for getting people into motorsport. So come on down. Um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. What I'm gonna do is come and show you um, our spare chassis, because that gives you an idea of how much work actually goes into a touring car. So this is chassis number three. Never been used. Um, we built it back in 18 as a spare car. Um, as you can see, it's not very much like a normal road car. A lot of people, even in the industry, think that, that an NGTC spec touring car is is a road car with you know with a roll cage and some other bits on it. But it's it's far from that. So first stage, when we get the shells in, they come to us from the production line as a body in white from from Opel themselves or from Vauxhall. Um, they go off to be acid dipped, get rid of any seam sealer, any nasties or anything in there and then come back to us. They go on the chassis jig which you've just seen. First thing we do, where the chassis legs, where your chassis legs would normally come down, there and there, chop them off, chop them at the bottom of the A pillars, uh, remove the entire firewall um, and then start fabricating the mounts for the, uh, for the NGT spec sub, NGTC spec subframe. So, Every car on the BTCC grid runs exactly the same subframes, front and rear, so same suspension setup and everything. They're a bolt on part, we'll show you the subframes in a minute. Um, it gives us, it, it keeps things level, keeps BOP uh, equal, in theory. Um, 
and it just it just makes things a bit easier for everyone but yeah so six bolt fixing there which then goes through into the cage um, obviously cage is pretty substantial um, but what we'll do is we'll open the door and show you inside and show you what we do with the floor and everything so inside the car itself um, it's fairly similar to a standard car, but obviously from the firewall back, we remove the firewall, new firewall in there. And then the front seat, the front uh, pieces of the floor, they are factory other than pedal box mounts down here. And obviously seat mounts here, air jack mounts to the two front corners, ballast box mount down in there, and these bits here. Um, but yeah, central. so we build, uh, the bits we build, central tunnel, so from from there back, that is our mount, that is our fabrication. Driver's seat is uh, six inches inboard and 12 inches back from the factory position, obviously for safety and for balance. Um, yeah, our own tunnel, factory seat squab, and then from the seat squab back, we build the floor uh, to about four inches from the back of the boot. There's about that much boot floor in there. Uh, we build between those for, obviously, fuel cell mount in here, air jack mount at the back, and then the um, four bolt subframe mountings in there that holds all the rear suspension um, and the whole rear setup basically. So semi built up rear subframe. Um, this is uh, our spare one. This would go to the track like this. So standard RML subframe, same as every car on the grid. We run our air jack in there as well. Front wheel drive car. Uh, we run the power steering in the back, so it's an electro-hydraulic power steering system which basically means we can run the power steering when the car's turned off because obviously 10 inch wide cold slicks on a hot day it's not something that you'd want to be turning when you're pushing the car if you didn't have the power steering. So, um, Again, rear suspension setup is all control, so every car on the grid has got the same rear arms, same rear roll bar, brakes, everything's the same. Um, Anything we're free on positioning, so we can adjust positioning, adjust camber shims, things like that. Um, uh, and obviously, dampers, dampers are all inboard, so they normally sit here. Push rod inboard, rear dampers there, with the pots and everything on. We um, we are free to do what we like internally on those. They're all Penske units, so every car on the grid has got the same Penske body on it. Um, we've actually got our own damper dyno, and we work really closely with. Uh, with IBAC to do a lot of custom spring rate work. Um, again, that's another service we offer to customers is, is the damper rebuild. We're a KW Motorsport Centre, so damper rebuild, uh, damper servicing and tuning and things like that. We do a lot of that for not only race teams, but other road customers kind of off the back of knowledge gleaned through touring cars. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at a front subframe. So front subframe, this is obviously a bare subframe with nothing in it. What would normally happen before a race weekend is the guys will build the subframe up in sub-assembly before we go. So obviously engine, gearbox, all suspension, brakes, hydraulics, everything basically sits in this frame. Uh, and we carry a spare one with us at the track, so we've got a big flight case that has a pretty much completely built up front clip on it. Um, so obviously if we have an incident and we need to swap an engine, swap a subframe, swap all of that over, we can do that really simply. Um, it takes to, to do a complete engine change or a complete front end change it takes about an hour, hour and a half on one of the touring cars. It's, it's a fairly, you know, it's quite an involved job, but everything's designed to be simple and easy. Um, just like the gearbox, and we'll take you into the, in, into the gearbox room now and show you one of those, just so you can see how simple it is. NGTC spec. Uh, gearbox, six speed sequential X track unit. Uh, every car on the grid runs exactly the same, exactly the same gearbox. Um, ratios inside it, we are fixed on first, second, and third, but we're free on fourth, fifth, and sixth just to kind of keep things equal and, and keep the bot right. Um, they're a pretty simple premise. So, this is a strip box. So, here, so obviously, engine bolted there. This end works as a cassette system. In fact, we've got a, a complete box there. So that is end casing. That'll come off. And inside there are the two shafts. 
with all with all the ratios and everything on them. Um, so it means that when we want to change ratios or look at anything on the car, we don't have to take the whole gearbox off the car. So the guys on a Saturday after qualifying, um, because we want to check the state of the internals as part of our lifing process, we will completely strip the box down to that. Um, and they will um, and they will check all the gears. They'll change preload on the diff. Um, they can basically do what they want to do. Um, and that, that kind of leads us onto the lifing side of things. Lifing is a really, really impart, important part of what we do. Um, we use a computer system called LifeCheck, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and basically means that we every part of the car has got a serial number on it. You can use an RFID chip if you want to. Um, so we know exactly how many kilometers, how many hours of use something has had and how that fits in profile wise to its, to its life. Um, basically to minimize mechanical failures, um, which is one of the reasons that touch wood, we tend to not really have any mechanical failures um, because, we, because we life everything. Um, and actually we follow that down to every program we do. So even the TCR, VW Racing Cup, Junior Saloons, everything's lifed. Um, and I think that's part of how we've built up a good reputation, you know, from from nothing in, in 2015 up to a factory team within two years was by lifing it, lifing everything, managing it properly. Um, Martin Broadhurst, our team manager, is he's ex Pro Drive, um, uh, ex Triple Eight. He is a very accomplished engineer and he is very much of the do everything right or don't do it. Um, and we're the whole team, that's kind of the ethos behind it, is yeah, do everything properly. So dampers, as we said, Penske dampers, every car on the grid uses the same units. Um, one of the major tools in our arsenal is our damper dyno. So we actually take that to the track with us. Um, and it just means that if we haven't got the correct spring rates or if, if something's not quite right and we need to make any changes or we need to rebuild a damper, we can, we can do it there and then in the truck at the track. Um, this gets used a lot for customer work as well. So we do a lot of a lot of build, a lot of tuning, a lot of rebuild of customers' dampers, whether it's race cars, track cars. Uh, we've actually done some autograph stuff, which is which is quite cool. Um, it, it's actually a really fascinating thing to watch Martin, the team manager. He, he is the man that kind of understands and, and can decode everything. Um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a genuinely interesting process watching him every, every Every time the touring car goes out for probably four or five days beforehand, he's sat here with his laptop with this building our dampers up. Um, it's just a really, it's quite a rare thing and it's, it's a really useful part of our, our armory. Obviously, main event, BTCC car. As we said, this is chassis number two. Um, so this is the car that uh, we've been using this season for all of our guest drivers. Um, driven by Senna Proctor in 17 and 18. Uh, this is the car that actually won our first ever race in 2018. Um, so the car itself, you've seen, you've seen the chassis and everything. Engine is a two litre turbo Swindon power plant. Um, can't show you under the bonnet for obvious reasons. Um, but again, that, that, so that's the Toka power plant. So if you build a car, if you build an NGTC spec car, to run in BTCC, you either have to run an engine from the stable of the vehicle. Um, so this being a Vauxhall, we could use either a Vauxhall or Opel engine or a PSA engine, um, but it has to be a two litre turbo. Um, but we opted to use the Swindon power plant, which is the official Toker engine, um, which ironically is actually a Vauxhall, is based on a Vauxhall engine. Um, they put out between 350 and 380 horsepower, depending on boost levels. Again, that's all to do with bot. Um, car itself has to weigh 1,280 kilos uh, at the end of the race with driver weight in it plus any ballast. Um, so it's not, a lot of people assume that everything in there is carbon fibre and you know it's all done to save weight and everything but it isn't. It's, it's about having the weight in the right places and we've still got to hit that minimum weight. So for example when Jess Hawkins drove the car this year she was actually the lightest ever touring car driver. Um, and we had to ballast the car to, to make that weight up. Obviously success ballast is quite an important, um, it's quite a big part of it, quite a big part of the championship. 
So success ballast is a fixed area. So inside the car. That box there is our ballast box. So we always know where it is. Um, you know, we, we've that's factored into our calculations of center of gravity and everything. When the guys set the car up, they will put, we'll, the driver always has a target weight. So for example, JP, he has his target weight and we know exactly what he's gonna weigh every race weekend. So when we're setting the car up, we've got lead weights that weigh the same as JP. They'll go in the driver's seat and then the guys will do the setup. Uh, we've used absolute alignment equipment now for the last three years and it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, most people use, still use the old bar and string method, which works fine. Um, we've sanity checked our equipment quite a few times with bar and string and it is absolutely spot on every time and it just gives us that little bit of advantage when you're literally fighting for thousands of a second you, you need that so um, brakes AP BTCC setup 368 millimeter six pots on the front I think 325 mil on the back if I'm correct um, twin pot again BTCC spec ones we, JP goes through a lot of brakes, um, other drivers don't, it's dependent on their driving style. We tend to change, JP will probably change discs and pads every session, um, whereas other drivers less so because you don't need to, um, but still they, they form part of the lifing process. So we'll only, we'll only use a few millimeters of the pad and then they're done for us. Um, same with the discs, once they've had a couple of sessions on them, they're done. Um, tires. Um, 20, 20 uh, slicks per car per weekend new plus carryovers um, so obviously tyres are quite, a, um, quite an integral part of it um, we didn't use any of the option tyres this year it was just the prime medium compound Goodyear's and the hard compound at Thruxton which kept things nice and simple to be honest because obviously every season before that we had to use the option tyre which we had I think the rules are slightly changing for next year but we had to choose what tyres we were going to run um, before qualifying on the Saturday um, and we could only run for the year three in race th three in race one three in race two three in race three um, it's all quite complicated um, sometimes you know as, as a lot of you racers will appreciate sometimes your soft compound will give you an advantage sometimes your hard compound will give you an advantage but it just it just mixes it up and it's actually quite a cool part of, of the btcc that kind of keeps things mixed up a little bit so carbon fiber is actually outlawed uh, as a material other the only place we're allowed to use them is um, door cards cross uh, cross structure and in the seat so we worked with motor drive to design this seat the the homologation um for seats in BTCC is, is the highest level. So I think it shares it with WEC. I think that's the only thing it actually shares it with. And it uses a six bolt fixing. So on the cage at the back, you can see there, it's, it's mounted to the cage. Uh, we worked with, with Motor Drive, British seat company of some 40 odd years um, to develop that seat. And we've run them for two years now and they're absolutely fantastic. Um, Steering wheel wise, when somebody drives the car for a year, they can choose their own setup of buttons on the wheel and the same on the dashboard in there. Shifters over here, so six speed sequential shifter, no flappy paddles or anything, this is all proper mechanical shifter. Brake bias adjuster down there. Um, it's, all pretty, it's all pretty rudimentary to be honest, there's no fancy traction control systems, there's no fancy ABS systems, it's very much driving the car as a proper car um, the cars themselves are actually a very difficult thing to drive which i think some people don't appreciate there's a lot of um rear rotation on them so rather than you know a lot of people think front wheel drive race car with with the slicks on it must be an easy car to drive these are everyone that's been in them from other stuff has just said that they're, they're a completely other world to drive they're a very hard thing to drive quickly until you get your head around them Well, there we go. Thank you very much, Cy, for the, uh, for the for the tour. Absolutely cringed watching that. <laughs> well, I was I was just 
I WhatsApped you uh, earlier laughing because I, I, I said I wasn't. I, I, I thought you were just the pretty boy of the team. I didn't know that you were technical minded as well. I'm not. I'm not quite <laughs> sure how to take that. <laughs> well, no. I, to, to be honest, I mean that that's everything. You you literally can take care of of everything from start to finish. Then for for the for the team. Try to. I'm not. I'm not technical by any means. But I think once you've been around, you know, we're quite a small team. We're quite close knit. I think when you spend so much time together, you just pick up on everything. You get involved in things, and uh, it, it's 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 interesting. You know, I like engineering. I like mechanical things. So yeah, you, you just pick up on these things. I think. Yeah, of course. No, definitely. Well, um, let's talk about the season this year. Then, obviously, uh, COVID has kind of got got in its way, and. You know the pandemic has ruined quite a quite a lot of racing, but the elite end of motorsport has been able to carry on. So it's great that the touring cars have, and yeah. you've, you've obviously had um, not had your core drivers. You've actually introduced new drivers almost um, every round. So how how did that come about? So we we kind of made the decision at the start of the season when they decided to delay. Uh, you know, to run a condensed season, we yeah. had a conversation with with our sponsors, with Jason, with the drivers. It was kind of a collective decision to basically pause the commercial element, to pause the season. Um, but obviously, we wanted to continue to support the championship. You know, the we're quite a small community in the touring car world. We wanted to support the championship. We didn't want to step away from it completely. So we, we decided to run one car, um, kind of give our sponsors a free year basically so everyone that's on the car this year is going to be on the car next year and they've had this year for free um mm -hmm. and just kind of give some opportunity to some up-and-coming drivers and people that wouldn't necessarily that maybe wanted to do btcc have provenance in other series but wouldn't potentially get the opportunity to to drive in a in a competitive touring car because it's such an expensive way to go racing um and it's obviously it's not an easy thing to get involved with. Um, it, we just kind of felt, you know, we're quite big on bringing people through, whether it's racing, whether it's engineering, kind of anything. We're, we're quite supportive and we wanted to give some people some opportunities, basically. Yeah, no, fantastic. So you kind of touched on it in uh, in that interview just then. Um, you know, is it is it a car that a competitive racing driver can jump into? Is it easy enough for them or is it is it, you kind of mentioned about it, being very pivotal and, and on the nose to drive. Mm. They're they're not from all accounts. They're not an easy car to drive at all. Um, they rotate quite heavily from the rear. They're very, you know, ours, we're obviously we're front wheel drive. Um, there's rear wheel drive cars, you know, uh, on the grid as well. But I think it's it's one of those cars that people, um, for example, Brad Philpot, who drove the car at Brands Hatch, he is very very successful front wheel drive racer in germany he's won two vln championships in front wheel drive he got in the car and he said it was completely alien to anything he'd ever driven um i think it's yeah i think they're very different to anything else in in the way the ngtc the, the setup is yeah okay so when we go back to the team and the setup that you've got there we don't have to be touring car drivers to to get involved with power max racing so if i was to have my ordinary tin top car you do you are involved with car preparation and engineering and, and things like that as well yeah we do a lot of prep for people actually um it's not something we shout about too much we probably should shout about it a little bit more and i, I think people assume that because we've got a, because it says btcc in our in our repertoire that there's a zero on the end of any every price that we have you know there's an extra zero on it um but we do we do a lot of car prep for people we do a lot of we, we we've built numerous cars for people from scratch you know from from space frame chassis to just a roll cage and a track car um we use all of the equipment we've got so the dynamics equipment um the the absolute alignment setup the, the damper dyno everything like that is available as a as a service for other people um whether it's repair of a chassis whether it's you know suspension rebuild and tuning whether it's setting up a car for like you know whether it's a track car or a full-on race car we do we do a lot of customer work for people um that's kind of the bread and butter of our business to be honest okay okay so let's look at next year um jason looks like he's coming back um yeah, yeah he's got back. Anyone else that's going to accompany him, or we can't um, say it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's certainly some conversations going on. Um, we actually had somebody in here today that we've been talking to. Um, I think there's probably four or five serious prospects at the minute. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, we're we're you know what we're in a good place for next year actually. I think the way we paused everything commercially has put us in a really strong position for the start of next year. We're doing a lot of car developments. I've actually got one of the engineers, uh, JP's engineers, actually sat in the office behind us now doing some stuff with one of our engineers. Um, you know, we're we're certainly aiming with JP and whoever is in the second car with him you know we're, we're gunning for the win this year we're not we're not there just to make up the numbers fantastic well let's so, um let's yeah. hope that is the case we wish you obviously the the best of luck for for next year and it's great to see that you know elite motorsport has uh made, able to carry on and we've all in, enjoyed watching it and seeing all the different pedigree of drivers coming through it's this been a, it's been a strange year, year. It's been a it has year. it has well i've got the uh i've got three uh um touring car drivers up up next and uh, one of my questions uh, to them is obviously how, how they found it without the fans. But I guess that's something that is obviously a, a revenue earner as well as um, it's it's something that you kind of need for everyone to watch. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, you know, the, the TV numbers are so important for, you know, the BTCC. It's one of the most visible championships in the world. ITV show it live every weekend. We got just under 20 million people watching it in 2019, just the live broadcasts you know even with without the fans there the atmosphere is very very odd but it's good that it's still on tv and the sport the support from the fans has been absolutely amazing like you know we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the support of so many people and they've just been absolutely brilliant this year absolutely fantastic great guns all right well look we'll wish you the best um thank you for doing that video and the tour uh, of the premises really enjoyed that and uh, we will um, uh, come back with with everybody else um, a bit a bit later on with with uh, with the three British touring car drivers. So um, catch you all later. Thanks very much, Si. Thanks, guys. Cheers.
Performance Box Touch is not only a super accurate performance meter, it can also be used as a sophisticated predictive lap time, using GPS rather than distance to allow you to accurately compare how your current lap time compares with your fastest, corner by corner. Quick and easy to install, it automatically identifies the circuit you are driving on and loads the relevant track maps from our extensive database. Using a performance box for the first time, VW Classic Championship racer, Dan Rose, talks us through how he benefited from the system's bright delta speed LEDs on track. Yeah, a few times you'd go in and basically it would come up green, so you thought, yeah, and then mid-bend it was really sort of you know, pushing on a bit, and you'd come out and you was red, so you had to get the balance right of going in and getting the green going in and the green coming out, so you knew that was the best way through there. Using a lap timer mode, Dan was able to monitor how modifications to his car affected his performance on track. Like changing the roll bars, we could see that we're a couple of seconds slower straight away and that certain areas it's not working. Um, and then when you t flick back, it's working and it shows up on the times and also in your sectors. So the predictive lap times really work. Given a quick lesson on the Circuit Tools data analysis software to pinpoint exactly where time is being lost and then going through his data from the day, Dan said, um, looking back at the data now, we're a bit further on in the day. We can see that certain lines worked, certain lines didn't. Um, carrying a bit more speed into the first bend seems to have given us a bit more pace. Um, and also we can look at different sectors where in a couple of uh, laps I was quicker, but actually putting all those sectors together so that they work, um, which we've looked at. And then, yeah, we'll go back out and have another go. But so far we've, we've gained yeah, two or three seconds throughout the day. Um, which has really worked well with us. Um, yeah, so when we come back racing, we should be up there. Hi, Chris Dawes here. I've stepped away from the commentary box for a change and I'm in front of the camera because this time I'm talking about my business, Open Doors Training. Founded by myself as a project of passion because I felt so lucky that I get paid to do the things I do now. Commentating, hosting awards, voiceover artists, TV, radio, podcasts, live shows, you name it, all of those things are an absolute privilege, especially when I came from someone who was paralysed by fear when I had to present at university and when I first went into business after graduating. But thankfully, I got accused of making IT entertaining when I was in my sales and marketing role. I know, not that easy, but I'm proud of that one. And that's what really was the trigger, enabled me to carry on with all the different things I do now. I want to now help others open doors that they may not yet know exist. And you never will know exist unless you put yourself in a position where you can be heard, whether that's in business, in public sector, in sport. All of it is the same. 
If you're silent, no one will know you exist and how good you are at things. You've got to put yourself in a position where you open those doors, at least that, so that you can knock on the doors and they know you are there. So that is what we do here at Open Doors Training. It's not about creating blueprints of presenters or media darlings or whatever it may be. It's about unlocking you. Instead of contain, being the contained version of you, we want to get 110% of you. You probably exaggerate it by 10%. I'm sure I'm not like this when I'm at home on the sofa. The wife would kill me. But it is about still being you. And that is what we work on within all of our training. So come on over, opendoorstraining.co.uk. Let's have a conversation to see how we may be able to assist you going into hopefully a better year in 2021. So my name's Tom Ingram, I'm competing in the British Touring Car Championship with Team Toyota GB. So the BTCC is one of the toughest championships around. There's so many quick drivers, so to get the edge you've got to be looking for any little millisecond of improvement. So whether that be from training hard at the gym or having the best kit around, you've got to find the edge any way possible. So the thing I love about the Wallero products the most is the temperature regulation and not only does it regulate my temperature and keep me cool when it's really hot but when we're testing in the middle of winter it keeps me warm as well the feel of these is amazing they're so soft you know you could wear this to bed and be more than happy so the lower under has really helped my performance and reduced the effects of the heat on my body and the heat fatigue that i'm finding that's where i'm finding a big improvement so over the course of a it doesn't matter if i'm testing it doesn't matter if i'm racing I'm just not feeling quite as fatigued as I would have been without it.